Hey everybody, um, welcome back. Make sure we're recording, yes we are. Um, time for the next video. And um, first a couple of things, thanks for the comments, thanks for taking the time to take a look at these. Uh, you know, I really, uh, I, I, I appreciate the feedback, I appreciate you know, that you guys are, you are taking a look at stuff and I'm hoping you're getting stuff out of this. Um, this is going to be um, there's going to be a break after this for a couple of weeks, so this will be the last video until probably mid July. Um, I'm going to be heading, uh, doing a little bit of traveling over the next couple of weeks, going out to the West Coast and uh, uh, spend some time with my daughter and spend some time with uh, my former students out there. So, um, uh, so. Uh, couple weeks for the next one. Uh, a couple of other minor changes. Uh, now that we're into the series, instead of making a separate um, GitHub or a Git branch for every every episode, I'm just going to merge these all into master and work them all into master. Um, if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it because um, it won't really affect you. Um, and uh, let's see, anything else? Um, oh yes, for themes. Right now we're using the Zenburn theme. Um, which is the theme that I normally use. And uh, if this doesn't work well on the video, please let me know. Um, there was a comment mentioning that Tango Dark looks good, so maybe I'll do my next video with Tango Dark and then we'll have a little poll and see what people like. Okay, so for today what we're gonna do is we're going to just clean up the, um, the initialization file and we're gonna do this by putting it into an org file, which is something that a lot of people like doing and I like doing. Um, so to start that, um, I want to show you some really cool things about org mode. So I'm going to go to a, let's split this, let's come over to here, and let's load something, we'll call it myinit.org. Um, and it could be named anything. Uh, the only thing you can't name it is init.org, and we'll talk about why later on. And we talked a little bit about org mode before in terms of the idea that it's a um, this outline thing and you know we can do that type of thing or we can um, move things up and down whatever but another really cool thing you can do with it is you can embed code blocks and what I mean by that is well we know that our configuration is elisp but I can make a code block by just typing begin source emacs list and then end source and I can put things between here um, Emacs list like plus two three we know we can run this by typing control X control E and you'll notice down on the bottom here it gives us the result but we can also run this in org mode by typing control C control C in the block it asks on the bottom do we want to evaluate this we type yes that's a little security feature and then it gives us our result or 2, 5, control C, control C, do you want to run it? Yes, 7. Um, so we can actually put Lisp inside or ELISP inside org mode. There's a lot more we can do with this, tons more. This is barely scratching the surface, but this is all we need for now. Now, one of the problems with this is indentation doesn't quite work right, or doesn't quite work easily. If I hit tab, it doesn't work. Um, and so in org mode, there's a nice feature that you can bring up a separate editor. Let me just go to one window for now. And I do this by typing control C dash. And you notice that it brings me a little editor here where the tabbing works. But the problem is, where did I go from there? I went to the wrong thing there. Okay, let me just go back to here, control one, control C, uh, revert that. Okay, uh, so the tabbing works for this. Not that that looks particularly good, but with the version of org mode that comes with the version of Emacs I have installed, to get out of this you're supposed to do control C apostrophe again or control X control S. Neither of these work. So what I have to do, I'm just going to kill this buffer, go back to one, is I have to install package. Did I spell that right? Or is it package install, sorry. And I want to install org mode, or it's just org. And uh, we'll save our init file, we can change anything there. And this is going to install org from Melpa. Um, unfortunately, I don't know how to force this to happen from the use package in the init. I couldn't figure that out before I made the video. Um, so I guess we're gonna to have to do this this way. So now that we've done this, let me kill this buffer, go back to our init file here. Let's reload this myinit.org, 
can make this a little bit bigger. So we'll do control C apostrophe. We're in here, make it bigger. Again, now the tabbing works. I know that looks really silly, but I just wanted to show the point. We can make the changes, control C apostrophe. It's not, it's, ah, I guess I have to reload Emacs for this. Um, so let me do that. Load our init file again. Myinit.org. Make the font a little bigger. Control C uh, apostrophe. Make that bigger. Change that. Put the close parentheses in. Control C apostrophe, and then it goes back. Um, so that's one thing that if you if you try to do that control C apostrophe to get in and out of that little editor, uh, it doesn't work. Just do install package org, and uh, that'll bring you to um, a Melpa version, a more updated version of org mode. That'll take care of things. Well, what we can do with this, what's cool about this, is we can run this from another file. And I'll show you this by doing a little example. Emacs, we can run other programs like Tetris within here. That's Tetris mode. So I'll save this and I will make this a little bit smaller so you can see the bottom of the screen. And if I now do control C, control C to run this, yes. Uh, well, it's running something in there. This will be cooler in a minute. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our init file and what we'll do here is we're going to use a new command, and this is not permanent, this is just to show you something. It's org-babel, and notice autocomplete is now working because we got that from the last time. So org-babel, um, we want to do org-babel load file, and we're going to do expand file name, and we're just going to run myinit.org, which is the file that just has that, uh, that Tetris in it. And now if I run this, control X, control E, not only does it load that file, that org, that, that org file, myinit.org, but what it's actually doing is it's running the code blocks in there, and this one is running Tetris. And if we come back here to our little terminal, make this bigger, and we do an ls, notice that we have myinit.org, but it changed that to myinit.l, or it compiled it to myinit.l, which just has the e lisp in it in that little code block. Um, and that's what's going on here, and um, that's why you don't want to name it init.org because then it would overwrite your init.l. That would not be good. Um, so now let's do our conversion into um, using org mode for our configuration. So the first thing we're going to do here is, where are we, where are we, where are we, where are we? Oh, I have to put Emacs into the background here. Okay. All right. So. We're going to want to change a few things here. I'm going to get rid of these lines. We're going to take these and move these down to here. Um, just because this is going to be all the stuff, and I'm doing this slowly just so we can kind of see it. These are all the commands that we want to put into the org mode file for this. This is the stuff that we're going to want to comment and be able to look at cleanly. Um, let's just go up to here. So we're going to kill that. We'll go into myinit.org. And we'll just, just paste that there for now. So this is just cut and paste over. Then we're going to come back into here. We don't need these custom set variables. Um, it'll just recreate them if we need to. And this is going to be our bootstrapping. So what it's going to do, it's going to require a package. It's going to, you know, all the stuff to set things up just like we did before. But at the end, what we're going to do is we're going to expand the file, and the file name is going to be tilde dot, tilde slash dot emacs dash d myinit.org. And we just save that. And um, myinit.org is the file we're creating. Tilde, this is what expand file name will do. It'll expand that tilde into whatever your home directory is, and then emacs d the directory we're in. So now let's do the cleanup on this guy here. So. Why don't we do, uh, we'll make a little setting here, and we'll make this heading, this'll be um, uh, interface tweaks. We'll make a source block. Now, I could do that begin source, end source, but if I just type less than S and then hit tab, 
it auto completes that. And let's put these two lines in here. And I'm just going to add a couple lines that I kind of like. Um, one is going to be F set yes or no dash P to Y or N P. That's going to mean every time that I change to, um, every time I'm asked yes or no, like on those org blocks, it'll just let me type in Y or N. So I'll save me a little bit of time. I have to put a little thing there. And then we're going to do global set key, keyboard F5, revert buffer. Um, a lot of times when we're, um, when we're working, I want to reload a buffer to change a configuration. This means I don't have to type in escape X or alt X revert buffer. I can just hit the F5 key for that, just a little convenient. Um, so now we're just going to have, let's have a little section. So let's have uh, try. And we could put a little comment in here about what it does. And we could put in, well, let's just put in Emacs Lisp. Uh, which key? Uh, we could say that this brings up some help. And uh, actually, what I want to do here is let's. Um, right for that and um, we're just gonna put all of this into an Emacs Lisp section because I don't want to take all the time for the video of you to you don't have to watch me do all of this just to see it so we'll just come down to the end let's uh, take that end source there and let's uh, put a little section in here and we can say the rest so now if we save this uh, the nice thing about this is if we start our um, put up this and we'll say overview. Let me save that and hit F5. I didn't run that little thing there. Let's let's run this source block. Yes. Great, it resulted. F5, now notice it's running that. Now, everything is nice and compact. And if I want to say, oh, let's look at that try stuff. Tab opens it, tab closes it, tab opens it, tab closes it, tab open, tab closed. Really convenient. And the cool thing now is if I exit all of this and I type Emacs, if I typed everything incorrectly, it all worked. And it looks like it did. It looks like it went to the right theme. Let's see if uh, the various packages are there. Let's see if which key is there. Control X. Which key is there? Uh, let's, uh, let's go to myinit.org. It loads the bullets correctly. So now we can have a much cleaner um, configuration file that's easier to read, easier to maintain. Uh, I'm going to modify the rest of these sections before I put up the video and before I put up the code for this uh, so that each section is isolated. But that's it for this time. Um, again, uh, love the comments, love the questions, um, you know, even love the thumbs up. Um, I appreciate you guys coming for this. Uh, for all you who are suggesting or asking for episodes on certain things, I hope to get to all of those. Um, I'll probably put a blog post up sometime next week while I'm away about what I've learned while doing this. But for the next video, it'll probably be sometime in the second half of July. Um, so thanks a bunch for viewing and enjoy.